Next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Kia Seltos. So, there are technically two different clusters that are available. You're going to find this larger 10.25 inch low in the majority of the lineup. So that when you're in the base model, it's going to be a smaller 4.2 inch traditional cluster instead. But I mean, that looks really nice. The steering wheel inside of this thing is going to be manual telescoping. As you can see just by my left knee there, you can drop down, move it in and out, up and down to find that perfect position. And just click it, log it back into place. A few small highlights before we jump through. So down the center stack by the shifter, there is a button for the heated steering wheel. And then there's also a little drive mode selector switch, so you can move between different modes. So each mode does something different, like do you want to essentially be in like a gas saving type of a mode, or sporty performance, where it's going to hold on to the RPMs a little bit more, give you a nice sporty feel instead. So you've got some options there. This is good. Uh, steering wheel, like I said, nice and comfy, heated all the way around. Stick on the left side is here for your blinkers, your high beams, lock it into an auto mode. The auto high beam, what that one does is that if your beams are on and recognize, the vehicle recognizes somebody's oncoming, it's going to dim them, and then it's going to bring them back up when that car passes. So very smart. You can figure out what's going on with your fog lamps on off, and then what's going on with your running lamps. I always just recommend to keep the running lamps in the auto mode, though, so that they can come on or turn off as necessary. Stick on the right side is going to be for your front wipers, and then rear wipers there. You're going to pull towards you for the front wiper fluid and push away for the rear. The buttons on the left hand side there, there are a series of different options. So when you have the smaller 8 inch media screen, this button is going to be for Google Assistant or Siri Assistant. So you just do a press there in order to activate. When you've got the larger screen, it's going to also have double function. So you'd be able to make phone calls, you could navigate using your voice and things like that. This is to answer or hang up on phone calls. You've got a mode button there, and that's going to let you change between a few different things. So if you wanted to essentially change between your different media sources, you've got that flexibility. And then there's a star button, which is going to let you go between a few different options as well. So rejecting calls, voice memo, home, things like that. So you've got a few different options. This is going to allow you to go through all of your different presets there. You can also do just a press and hold if you wanted to seek. So it's a long press and hold there, but you could seek that way if you want to. You can also up and down on your volume, or push in if you wanted to mute your volume out instead. These buttons are for your basic cruise control system. So you turn cruise control on, and then once you get to speed, you're going up in order to set, and then up or down to increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. This is to cancel your cruise control, and then you've also got a lane centering system. So this essentially is going to keep you nice and balanced in your lane as you go. There would technically be the option for smart cruise control with the distance indicator, and the big benefit there is essentially a set it and forget it cruise control. But that's going to be available on the higher trims of the vehicle. So if you want to walk through on the higher trim steering wheel, you'll find that down in the description of this video. But if you want to use the, the, the adaptive cruise system in general, you'll find that video in the description as well. And then these two buttons are going to be to navigate through the cluster screen itself. So essentially we're going through different pages and then up and down through those different pages as available. There's also this generic screen, which gives you some added settings that are available as well. But I'm going to zoom you in and let's go through some different options. All right, so first thing, start off, and I guess I'll kind of outline everything. So along the left side there, you can see that's your current speed. Along the right side, that's your RPM gauge, current fuel level, and then you've got current temperature for the vehicle as well. How much gas you currently have left based off of your current fuel tank and then very bottom there you can see how many kilometers you've driven and then the outside temperature that little a is the auto start stop system so that's the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine if you're stopped for an extended period of time you can toggle it on or off there's a series of buttons just by your left knee to do that so if you don't like the engine turning off when you come to a stop you could technically turn it off then i did mention series of different drive modes with a slightly different look as you go through each mode kind of nice but let's navigate through our pages there so starting off with our different settings so you're going to press an old ok and there you go so series of options you've got warning volume so as you have warning messages come up do you want it to be like a high normal or low leading vehicle departure so if you're driving and the vehicle in front of you starts to drive away you'll get a message letting you know that that uh, the chime letting you know that that vehicle's driven away so you can know to stop not paying attention and start driving but it is useful, but you could toggle it off if you want to. Driving safety, forward safety, 
and warnings. So whether or not you get that one or not. So if you're going to be in a potential collision, it could let you know. And then you can see there when you toggle it off, that's going to bring up a message along the bottom. Lane safety systems available as well. So if you start to veer over into another lane without signaling, it's going to gently nudge you back into your lane. It's very different from the lane centering button along the bottom right there. So this lane centering one is going to keep you perfectly balanced in your lane versus the other one that we were looking at is going to just gently nudge you back into your lane instead. So let's hop back in and that was driver safety, blind spot safety. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, it's going to highlight and let you know. Same idea, safe exit. If you're going to open up your side door and there's somebody that's oncoming, it's going to chime at you and let you know. Moving back for parking safety, so rear cross traffic alerts. So as you go to back up, if somebody's coming perpendicular, so from the left or right side, it's going to let you know of a potential collision. And is that, no, was that it? I think that was it. Yeah, that's the basics of driver assistance settings. Next up, you've got drive info. So there are a few different counters here. So basic drive info, that's from the last time that the vehicle was turned off. You can press and hold the OK button there. So it's this one here, so you'd press it in in order to reset it. This one is since you've refueled the vehicle, but same idea, you can do it for press and hold to reset or your total accumulated info. So this essentially is going to be your trip one counter. So three counters, it's since the vehicle was turned on last, since you've refueled and your generic, just like trip one info instead. And then you've got the auto start stop system as well. Same idea, you can restart it. And that's essentially going to be the vehicle turning off, turning itself off after an extended period of time. Next up, series of settings, which we've already seen the driver assistant settings, but there are some cluster options. So if you wanted to link it to your drive mode, that's the selector switch we had in our center stack, or you could permanently lock it out to any of the other modes instead. So if you like the look of one of the other modes, you could tweak it out if you want. Wiper delay, icy road warnings, welcome sounds, they're all basics. Lights, so illumination, you could adjust the brightness or darkness of the cluster screen here if you want to. You can also do that just down the just down by your left knee. There's a button there as well. Moving back, one touch turn signal. So you've got three flashes as a default, but you can have it's just a single flash, five flashes, or seven flashes instead. Headlight delay. So when you go to lock the vehicle using the fob, do the lights just turn off, or is there a little 30 second delay for that? And then high beam assist. So that's the one when you're in the auto high beam mode. If the vehicle senses somebody's oncoming, it's going to automatically lower them and then bring them right back on again. Door settings. Do you want the door to lock automatically when you shift or when you start to drive? Auto unlock when you shift to park, turn the vehicle off, or do you never want it to auto unlock? And then two press unlock on the key fob itself. Convenience settings. So rear occupant alerts. So if you turn the vehicle off, it's going to tell you to check the back seats, your service interval, and then whether or not the vehicle shuts down automatically after 60 minutes, 30 minutes, or just never shuts off. So if you're going to a drive-in, you could set it off so that it never turns off and you'd always have your vehicle running for you instead. And then units, do you want to measure in either kilometers or miles per hour? Temperature unit, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Economy unit, either kilometers or liters. And then that turns out to miles per gallon. So if we're, if we're in speed unit, miles and back, that's going to change out to either US gallon, etc. So you've got some different options that are available there just depending on which one you're at. Then moving back, series of other options there as well. Basic reset, so you can bring this thing back to its factory default instead. Next up, you've also got, so just tire information. So you start to drive and it's gonna let you know what tire information is available there. So I know that's quite a little bit of information, but that's everything you need to know about the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Kia Seltos.